Savage here and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for liking, sharing and subscribing. Loads of videos on my channel. Today, the Jalera DNA 50cc. Have a quick look around in a second. But what are we doing to this bike? Well, full service, exhaust change, rollers, the variator, new battery, getting some mirrors for it, and the front fork seals we're doing as well. And then whatever else we can find. Now this little baby here has 112 kilos. It looks like a motorbike, and that's what I've always liked. Jalera had that forefront with the runner and this DNA, and lots of other little models, some not so good, to really push the design and first to do it in this shape. I know of, as like I said, the Pulse Rage did one that was crap. Um, but they look like a bike, and when you sit on it, for people who ride motorbikes, the moment you pull off, you go to pull the clutch in, because that's how much it feels like riding a motorbike. Plastic tank under here that lifts up, and you've got your fuel at the back and your water at the front. Don't make the common mistake of filling up the water bottle. It does happen. Great 14 inch tyres back and front of here, 120 at the front, 140 at the back. And they look really quite chunky. Common problem is why the stand is here in my hand and not on the bike, the fact that they rub. Okay, he's done this little bit here to keep it down. You need to do a bit more work than that to keep this stand down and not to have it dangling on the floor. So he's got a side stand on here, suits the bike to be honest with you, and the style as well being a side stand. I'll debate whether I want to put this one back on or not. It is, however, only a few bolts. Does this start? Yes, but not quite how I like it. Uh, it starts instantly, but I think there's a bit of a playing with it, the last owner. Um, he had to mess around with the carburetor. Someone, as I said in my last video, that had drilled through it rather than actually putting a prop one. He's gone 62. I've brought, yeah, I know it's only a cheap little exhaust, full power, bit of sound to this one, um, but it should, it will run a lot, lot better rather than the exhaust on here now that it is not from here. I can see you can buy them, but if you look at the manual and what they came with was like a bit like a Speed Fight 1 exhaust that goes along a bit at the, at the end as well. This thing looks like a stalker exhaust or uh, it's just not nice and it's coming off. And this will be going on. One of my first jobs I actually want to do. See if it breathes right and see what it rides like as well. Just under cut the gallon tank in here. Um, usual oil and gearbox oils. There's 2T. This is the 50cc as I said. They are fast, they really are fast. There's some amazing speeds out of these, a lot more than most of them. I had done up one before and I got 60 out of it. Hand on heart, 60. And yet I had a, a 125 version, 40, and I couldn't get more than 56 miles an hour and I absolutely hated it. It didn't run right from the get-go. But these can run really well with a few modifications. It's got its usual little bits of damage around it. I'm not gonna spray this one up. Um, the clocks are quite nice and they do go. It's nice to see this is all together. Please imagine the seat's on. But this is gone, <clears throat> so that needs doing. Now, being on a side stand and still having the able to pull them down, I'm gonna have to build a bit of wood, jack the whole thing up the floor and then drop both of them out, taking away the speedo and obviously drive cable and obviously the brakes and able to drop them out and you replace both. Don't bother just doing one. Indicators they're doing as well. I'm not going to just try and glue it up there. It, it would be cheaper and easier, but it'd look a bit cack anyway. Um, and that's the exhaust. As I said, I just don't like it. It isn't right. Um, I know if you put in, you'll get this one, but it isn't right. Carburetor looks good. Um, I may have to clean that still. Other than that, yeah, it's a pretty decent little bike. The key in here, which one way lift the seat and the other way lift the top, so you'll be able to get this undone this way, like that. Oop, yeah, it's common to get that there when you open it. It should have a little sticky thing. This what I've seen, I've actually seen people fill this before, because this is nicely tucked in here where you put your fuel. <laughs> Obviously 2TL. Now remember, E10. You won't like it. The fuel will not mix with the oil. It won't run, don't use it. Put it on super, premium, 95 and not the new E10 rubbish that's coming out and flooding the market. Again, I have a lot of people say to me now, they've pulled up, and it's only for this video I had on E10, that they've noticed it. I mean, I've looked around, 
say seven foot up in the air is a little sticker saying you may not be compatible check dvla which doesn't tell you about peds doesn't tell you about scooters and motorbikes and when you go on they're so limited come on you I mean you're using crops for god's sake which normally have food to make ethanol you know through the same process as alcohol all that is not green i know i said coal power station before but end of the day it's natural gas wood rubbish whatever you're still burning it you know, so it's it's not good. Just oh, don't get me started again. Anyway, um, yeah, let's have a quick listen to this. I have it ready, actually. It says. I need to replace the dust seals on this bike, not necessarily the actual seals themselves. There's no leaks, it's just these are ripped apart. Rollers as well. So why have I got a drill? And why is there some wood behind me? It hasn't got a centre stand, although even it did have, it'd have to have it right up the floor. We need to be able to get the wheel off and both of the front forks out of the frame. So the bike has to come up and then this has to come off and then both go out to change these. Now I'm sure someone out there will have a comment to make about how stupid this is and how they will do it better because I get a lot of that. Um, I don't care. Um, <laughs> it will work for me. It's jacked up. It's a good 7 inch off the floor. Take these off. Take the wheel off. Drop it down. Job done. For cut the screws. I'm liking it. It works, and that's all that matters, really. And there you go. Keep these taped up. The reason being is if they go upside down or dangle, you're gonna get air in the system. This way, I just put it all back on together, and no problems. Be careful of this, this is a Speedo. Remember, I've said it many times, but these two bits of gadgets here to go round. Don't get it twisted up. Make sure you undo this bit to get it out, and put the bolts where you need them. And then literally, do one side at a time, you haven't got to wait the clock's falling down. And there you go. Lift it up, tap that up, put the new one on, job done. It's not leaking, if you look. So there's no need to actually change the seal, it's just a dust cover. But all this to change two dust covers past the MOT. Keep that there, let it dangle, keep your bolts where you need to put them. Do you know what? It's not a bad little idea, is it? And you'd pay for something like this, or an engine lift or something. Ratchet strap, cut the screws, cut little bits of wood, job done. Let me tell you, they were a lot harder than I thought they were going to be, unnecessarily. Not to get them off, not to get these out, because nice new ones in there, once they came down. But the new ones were ever so slightly bigger. A minute and a half maybe, and I could not get them down. Um, don't just put them down and whack hell out of them, you'll break them. So I had to get another o-ring, put it on top of this o-ring and I had to keep tapping them down and around and it was literally just doing this little game where they're all doing this half an hour um, I was using loads of maintenance spray going around I tried grease, didn't work, maintenance spray, tap, 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 tap um, eventually, <laughs> wrongly, I had to grind down ever so slightly on one corner and another corner and then tap them in that way um, yeah, for the price of 30 quid, being in a garage might be something you need to do rather than building a frame and all this sort of rubbish. But it's up to you, you know, I've done it now. There's no leaks. They look really good, I'll show you a bit later. Um, just literally putting these back on now. Tighten them up, lift this up. Make sure everything's back together properly. Don't this bit up, all right? Because it's your life if you didn't tighten it up or, you know, they're up like this, make sure they bang back on. We'll have a look around in a second to make sure I show you all the bolts you've got to do. this one and this one here are the most important when this goes back on it's fine remember to get it slightly higher not can't really see can you <laughs> but it's in there don't do that keep that up that keeps the brake fluid there and this can adjust later on that's just the actual clocks um, and the headlight and so on but they're on they look nice there's no leaks I'm actually really happy but it was a bit of hard work and a bit of 
thinking. We've got to put all the wheel and everything on yet anyway. But um, yeah, starting to look a bit like Christmas, eh? Do not muff this bit up. The wheel, the spacer goes on this side, okay? Spacer goes on there, okay? And that goes on this side of here. Don't muff that bit up. And also, the speedo drive, okay? Put the speedo drive on the wheel first and then push it in. Don't go around. There's two little bits in here that go on the wheel. You squish them, you knacker it. So let me get this on. And there's a little sleeve bit in here that goes on just there. Let me zoom in and show you. The caliper doesn't matter so much, but just in there, you can see two little shafts. That's what gets the um, speedo round. And on the wheel, there's a two bits here. They go on top of each other, they're knackered. They just sit there, okay? So let's just marry this up. And then this has got little two little lugs that line up just there. All right, if you get it wrong, then it can spin round and it can pull your cable out. This here is expensive, don't knacker it. Let me get this on. Don't forget when putting this on, because if you put it on afterwards, you're not gonna get the two screws that are under here. There's four, so put it on before. It is a case of using whatever you have available, your foot, your leg, anything you have available to get this in. Make sure that sits in nicely there. Don't push it out. Keep pushing it in, keep winding it in, give it a bit of forcefulness, and it will start to go in, okay? You will start to see it start pulling in. All right, it's a little bit hard, but it will do it. it takes a little bit of time, but it will do it. That's over there, that's in there. Move it a little bit more over there. And there you go, it's going in. Don't forget to put, oh crap, it's somewhere. <laughs> Don't forget to put that in. Use some old uh, magnet spray when putting that back in, okay? But leave it out for the time being. I want this right in here. Caliper doesn't matter yet. All right, that's ready to go. God, bloody hell, that's hard. Whew. Okay, sweating. Um, do that on the ground when you want to give it some a little bit more. Remember, you've got the bearings in there, so you don't really want to be giving it, you know, like 14 stone weight. It should be just, uh, there we go, that's lovely. So the clip's in there nicely, drive's in there, everything is as it should be. I'm well happy. So I just took her out for a very, very quick test ride, and it was horrid. <laughs> um, not the actual front end. Speedo works, thumbs up there. I was really happy with that, actually. Uh, all the lights work, driving system is lovely, but she was doing 18 miles an hour, and uh, 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 that's because I've just put this full power race exhaust on her, more than likely. I think I remember saying he did mess around with the jet, I think someone had drilled through it or something, um, not quite sure, but it is horrid, so it is carburetor time off. So carburetor off ain't rocket science, you know, auto choke. Needle, put out of the way, unclip the auto choke, petrol, feedback, oil, and you know, it's, it's off in seconds, you know. Um, if it was only one bolt for the middle here and one screw there, so it was off in seconds. Um, we're just seeing now what we have underneath here. I just need my glasses on, really, don't I? You know, there's no way I'm going to tell what size jet this is. I mean, Okay, I've put a big sports exhaust on here, and with that, I don't know. All right, you could, I know they're on eBay, and it says DNA, but anyone who's bought things from eBay, you know that it lies. You know it says it fits this and fits that, and you get it, and it just doesn't, all right? I mean, them fork seals said um, they were for this bike, and it had half an hour to try and get them on, and in the end, I had to sand them ever slightly down um, to get them in. They would just not do it. They would just not do it. So please don't believe everything that you read on eBay when it says it will fit this, it will fit that. Because I'll tell you now, they don't. Right, what we've got in there? Um, it's not great. I have to say that is, that's not pretty. There's all bits in there. So...
just check this jet out, what size that is, and we'll work it out from there. So, there is a problem with the carburetor, I know that. And whether that is what he was trying to say about this uh, jet, I don't know. But anyway, while I went to ride it the first time, I got 18 miles an hour out of it, and it didn't feel right. Now, these I reckon may be all different sizes. So let's just double check that they are, yeah, look, all different sizes. All right, so put these underneath where they were. I always remember there's one bike I work on and they're all completely different sizes and you don't want to mess around doing that, do you? So let me get this off. I want to look at the belt and the clutch and the rollers. So I think that is a problem now and the wife has just arrived with a lovely cup of tea so I'm going to drink that as well because it's cut of tea time. Hello wife, where's my cut of tea? See the limb for that one. So put them in the angle you got them. Here's my lovely cup of tea. Thank you wife. Mm. After cycling petrol and putting petrol in, it's, it's always nice having a cup of tea. Let me get on with this, get this off, and I shall uh, get back to you. I'm honest with you. I'm my bike outside. Everything's just a little bit, a little bit old in here. You know. Oops. You want it low when you're doing the outside, but quite hard when you do it the inside. Uh, clean enough. There's the belt. It's okay, as I said, it's just a little bit old, but let's have a look at the beer later. It was, it was juddering, that's okay. It's um, missing the little uh, holders on there. And, well, you know, I've said it time and time again, I don't even know what rollers these are. I will use my little scales that I have and uh, weigh them. They feel very, very, very light. Very light. And in there is just pretty crap. Where's a rag? You know, I do this every time for you lot. You know, clean it up. It works amazingly. Let me get on and clean this up. I've got some new rollers. Let's find out what these weigh. God, I, I dare say they weigh four grams. Let's have a look. So these are coming in at five, two-ish. Um, these are supposed to be six grams I ordered I've just looked on the back even with my bad eyes and it's 5.5 grams a bit rude if I've noticed that but still a little bit heavier than what these are so let's clean all this up they're around though clean it up put it all back and that might stop the uh, the juddering I was feeling truth be known we don't want to be doing things again and again and again but I've said it in so many of my videos. You have to take things off again and again. Now, I've got an 80 jet. And when I look through this jet here, with my bad eyes, I can see the hole. The jet that's in there hasn't got a number on it. But when I look through that, it was massive. It was so big. So, bloody exhaust again. <laughs> So I'm thinking, that's like a hundred or something in there. So that's gonna come out, I'm gonna stick this 80 in there. And then if it runs better, then I might even go, well, if it runs perfectly, I'll leave it. But if it runs better, I might go down to a 70. Um, I like 64, 66s, but these are fast bikes. So 70, 80 might be okay. So I'm gonna swap it out, change it, and see what it does. And uh, with the... Uh, Variator rollers and clutch now better than what they were. I noticed actually in the garage when it pulled away better. It wasn't doing that sort of, you know, when you grind a little bit where it goes to go and not go. That needed all cleaning. So get this off, get the um, jet out, swap the jet over, see if it runs and starts, and uh, you'll be the first to know what happens. So, slight dilemma. I rode quite a few of these before and if I'm honest with you they pull really really well um, they don't feel like a 50cc now admittedly I haven't got the same sort of terrain and distance that I can go 
Um, she starts. Starts really well. That's warm. I've got to check out tomorrow when she's cold. Um, starts really well, and it's ticking over around about a thousand ish, which is great. Um, I had three half turns, and she wasn't really pulling that much. Had to up the revs. Um, six, five half turns, and I went up and down the road, 28, 29, 30, 31, up to 35. Came back down, ran out of road. Um, six half turns, she went up the hill really quite quick this time, up to 35, and then down again 40 odds. Um, so it was better. But you don't normally have it six half turns out. But I've got an 80 jet, and also now uh, I haven't checked the air filter. Um, five and a half gram rollers, which I would probably like about seven if I'm really honest with you. So I think there's a little combination there. I'm going to buy some seven gram rollers. Um, I like a 76 jet, but while it's starting and stopping, I may leave the 80 there. I may sort out some air. So have a look at the air filter, give that a clean or a place. And I reckon that is it with this. Then I've got to just polish it and make it look pretty. Um, obviously I only put these little bits of white tape on just to see what it looks like and I actually think it looks quite nice. No leaking from the front fork seals now. Exhaust is acceptable. You, you need a bad noise out of this because it does look like a small motorbike rather than a ped. Um, I'm getting used to not pulling the uh, clutch in or looking for the gear. So it worries me tomorrow on the way to work. <laughs> I don't know, I should be fine. Who knows? So here we have the finished product. Very, very nice looking little bike. Um, I've left these on. I actually quite like them. I did look at actually buying the actual lines for it. And they'll come split and so on. But this now starts, rides quite well. But it is down to the exhaust. Let me explain that in a second. But underneath this lovely little uh, cap here is a very nice one year's MOT. Job done, thank you very much. Someone has to have a sniff. Everywhere I go. She could probably ride that actually. Oh yeah, where was I? <laughs> yeah, I've been training a little bit lately. Yes, keep going. Anyway, let's get back to the bike. <laughs> people my wife says to me what goes through your head oh, I just can't answer can I anyway ignition on oh. Impressed, but that's what you get. They had them for 80 pounds, these exhausts. Um, max power, full power. Um, end of the day, they are. Now, you're gonna have problems. I'm truly honest with you. Setting up a carburetor, um, the rollers variator with an exhaust and air system can be a bit tricky. I mean, I've often said people say to me, Mark, I've just done a 70 kit, which I say don't bloody do. It can be hard enough getting a 50cc to work, not a freaking 70 kit on there, and the bigger carburetor, the rejetting, plugs, everything else. Anyway, going back to this, um, when it's got one of these full exhausts on there, it's quite hard to set up. Uh, you either get top end, bottom end, mid range, you don't get all of them. Now, to buy the vision exhaust and that crappy one I had on here, um, was, I think it was about 120 pounds, and this was say 60 pounds on a deal. I can't knock it, I really can't. What you get is like when you first start a bit spluttery, um, pull away a bit spluttery, and you get this middle bit about 20 where, and then you'll suddenly it takes off like a power band. Um, and that's the best you can get these set up. You're never going to get it bang on. I can keep moving the jet down and down and back up again from 76, 70, 74, 68. You can keep doing that. Um, I could put some holes maybe in the air box. 
Um, I can change the rollers from 5.5 back up again and back down again. But to be honest with you, it is a world of pain. So sometimes, as long as it starts, which this does, and rides and gets up to 45, 50 mile an hour, be very happy with it. That's all I can say. Anyway, thank you so much. Please like, share and subscribe.